Dave and Helen Dart. Welcome to Dart Wines. Uh, behind the name Dart is our last name of Dart. And since I do the winemaking and the artwork, um, hence of art. Um, luckily my brother thought of that and I stole the name from my brother, but he's okay with it. And uh, Helen runs the tasting room and I do the winemaking in the back. And uh, we have all reds here. Um, uh, nothing about white wines, but with white wines you need to have a lot of equipment and a lot of chilling equipment to keep white wines cold through the whole process. So you either make a lot of white wine or you don't make any white wine. And uh, we would prefer not to make any white wine. And uh, our style is... Uh, What? Well, like Dave, big and bold. And <laughs> <laughs> of course, every winery is going to say that, but um, we we make all the wine right here. We make small batches, basically. Uh, a lot of our wines we make are even for the wine club only, and only available to the wine club. These are the wines that are currently available in our tasting room. We have a Zinfandel. We do a lot of blending, so we have a red bistro blend. That's a 50% Merlot, 25 Cab, 25 Petite Syrah. Uh, and then we have two Cabernets that we're tasting right now. That's our 05 Cabernet and our 06 Cabernet. And these are both estate grown on our five and a half acres of uh, Cabernet Vineyard. We can, uh, the difference between the two, it's an interesting story, is we can only make so much wine in here at one time. So of our five and a half acre vineyard, we normally do it in two harvests. So we'll go out and pick half of the vineyard, process the grapes, ferment it, get that wine in the barrels, free up our tank, and we can go out and pick the second half of the vineyard, which is what we did in 06, it's a normal year. In 05, we had an abundance of grapes out there still. We did our two harvests. We still have a lot of grapes hanging out there. We, uh, we're just gonna let them hang on the vine and kind of let them go back into the ground. We thought we were done for the season. We thought we were done for the season. December 10th and 11th, we went out and did a third harvest. And this has that third harvest in it. There were no leaves on the vines, but the grapes were still hanging. We would, uh, they would freeze at night, thaw during the day, freeze at night, thaw during the day. So. Our 2005 has that third harvest in it. Which is real plummy and jammy and just uh, gives it a real characteristic. The nose is almost like a port, but you, it's not sweet. It's gone dry, but um, it's just really interesting. So we started as home winemakers. Uh, 2000 was the first year we ever made wine. We were living in Elk Grove at the time. and. We came down to Lodi actually and bought Syrah grapes for our very first vintage. We uh, made it in our garage, very hot garage. And uh, the first year we took it to the Sacramento Home Winemakers and uh, to their wine competition. Then we took Best of Red. And then when we got home from the competition, we had the wine in the garage and it was kind of hot and we thought well this is pretty good stuff we better take it in the house so we gave it a home in the kitchen as we got home it was so hot as a matter <laughs> of fact we it was in five gallon carboys and the wine was spilling over the top it was so hot out in the garage but the wine still turned out to be excellent it, a, it didn't hurt it we at saved all. it we, we saved it. it so we started as home winemakers like i say and uh, all of our training came from the sacramento home winemakers uh, so we've taken a class here or there on winemaking, but uh, Dick. Uh, and Dick Martella was a very, very instrumental in, in helping us out. He, uh, uh, but the, uh, you know, it's a very, very fun hobby, and er most towns have a home winemaking uh, group that meets. And, you know, you have guys in there that have been making wine for 30 years, no intention of going commercial, very good winemakers, very good people to learn from, and it's a very, very fun hobby. We used to have a fun hobby. <laughs> now I have to find a new hobby because now our hobby is full time for us. Uh, but we ended up with nine barrels in the garage uh, as home winemakers. But we ended up air conditioning it. We did. And insulating it, so we, it was all safe. And <laughs> uh, 
Then we decided to go commercial and uh, wanted to be on a wine trail. Uh, you know, the last thing you want to be is a lone winery somewhere out in the boondocks. So we looked around at different uh, uh, wine trails in, in Northern California. And since I'm a fifth generation Valley Farm guy, uh, Lodi was a perfect uh, choice for us. So we came to Lodi and we just love this town and we love the wineries here in Lodi. They've been very, very helpful for us. Yeah, it's been a nice community to, to uh, become part of. Mm -hmm. um, we also do different blends. For instance, these are two wines that were only available to our wine club. Uh, and the main reason for that is I only make small lots. So uh, we make just enough for the wine club. Uh, we do like making a Barbera and a Tempranillo. We make a lot of Tempranillo wine. Uh, uh, not a lot, but we do Tempranillo every year. Uh, and I also use the Tempranillo in our port blend. Um, and some of this artwork, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about his artwork. Um, these are all photographs, and then they, he takes them into Photoshop, and then we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but they all end up on the bottle. Um, I guess I jumped in there a little too quickly tonight. That's quite all right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and, and to go back to this one, I, this is, the Barbera is not one of my favorite wines, and then um, I, I, well, this one is. But I, I said, he, I kind of rolled my eyes when he said he was going to make a Barbera, and I said, oh, don't make a Barbera. He said he doesn't make all the wines for me. I don't know why. That's, but anyway. <laughs> so anyway, it turned out just very, very nice, and, and I end up liking Barberas now because of this one. <laughs>